Welcome back everyone to episode 32 of Let's Play Rule the Waves as Austria-Hungary. So I know that our first order of business is to design a new destroyer. Let's get right into that. Um, a lot of people have recommended various things. Oh, um, actually before I do this I just want to point out because otherwise I will forget. Some more names. We have some more names going on. Four Fox. Uh, the Nike class battlecruiser from pretty uh, obscure I guess a uh, nerdy reference to David Weber's book series, um, Honor Harrington, etc. Anyway, uh, Destroyer class. Yeah, I think that's all the renaming I did. I might have missed, if you don't see your name and you wanted your name in there, just go ahead and message me again. I tried to go through all the comments and pick them all out, but I am only human and therefore subject to mistake. Okay, so we want a destroyer. Let's go ahead and have them recommend what they want. Let's see what they have. Oh. Now, we have better 3 inch guns, so I think we should stick with 3 inch guns. Um, it's going to give us a little bit of weight back as well, but on top of that, the quality 1 means, like, what's the difference here anyway? Wow, our 4 inch guns have a range of 11,000. That's significantly further than I thought. These are 9,700. That's 5? 12,200. Really not that significant a change between... So this is 11,000 almost flat, and this is 97. I don't think you're going to hit from very far uh, away with the destroyers anyway. Um, our battles are going to start happening around the 13,000 yard mark. Um, we no longer have to close in as close as we used to. So, let's see. I think let's just go ahead and go with the 3-inch guns, because they are the quality one. And I would prefer that. That gives us better accuracy, um, cheaper in every way. Okay, so let's try to get these things really fast. Looks like 32 is already a really good number. And 32 with coal type is actually pretty crazy good. Let's go for speed because I don't care if these break down as much. Just going to give us some more. Could probably even actually lower this down. Yeah, this thing can get away with being less than what it is. So of course, instead of doing that, now we currently have no. We're not over. We can. We're allowed to have five things center line. And there's people who wanted uh, more guns, and there's people who wanted more torpedoes. Kind of have to make a decision about that here because I think we can add more torpedoes. Um, let's see, this is, I think an I and an H and I would look good here. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that, that's, that's pretty good. Maybe I can clear this P and add it a little bit further forward. That's actually the furthest forward we can go. Okay, I can um, delete the H and I that I just put on there. And I can add... Um, See if the J and K fits a little better, and I can do two per side. Okay, that doesn't look good. I want to go back to the original HI. Okay, so now we update that. That looks reasonable to me at least. So we have three um, three inch guns. My own personal preference is I, I would prefer to remove one of these and get another triple mount torpedo in the middle. I'm just going to have to do that. This is a torpedo focus, so I've never done... It's an interesting co comment from Martin that it would be nice to have a gunboat, a destroyer gunboat. I'm actually going to avoid that, though, because my this is supposed to be a little bit more of a torpedo-heavy playthrough, and we can definitely get a lot more torpedoes if we do this. So let me just clear all mounts, and we can get three center line. So we'll just do this and how does that look okay I don't want the R then let's get something a little bit closer how about the Q that should be f wow okay that's fine I, I think that's fine and then we'll just put this one over here instead there all right very good there it is and we could call this the leopard I thought we didn't we, oh we have the tiger the panther and the leopard yeah, we're definitely naming it. This is very similar to the World War II German tank um, class name design. 
<clears throat> excuse me. Um, but I did want to name uh, one of ours the Tiger II. Tiger II class, the same way that we had the St. George II, because the Tiger II was a, had some heroic moments, so I'd like to honor our heroic ships by naming entire class names after them. So everything's good here. We have actually plenty of space available. Um, yeah, this is the down, so you can see how much space this actually saves me. I could just go back to normal. No, 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 I, I can't do that because maybe we can get some more speed out of this. Oh, we can. Okay, that's fantastic. And then we'll use the rest for ammo. And yeah, that's good. Okay, I, I like this. We probably don't need more than... I'm just going to put it at 240. I doubt we'll ever, <laughs> ever run out of ammo from these. But very good. We have uh, nine torpedoes, which is launchable on either side. It's a huge number. Fantastic. Medium range, we still got. And uh, we have plenty of um, space left over if we ever get better fire control. So I feel like this is a pretty solid ship, the Tiger II. Probably won't even be that expensive because we have a little bit of space left over. We're not using oil engines. You know, with oil, we probably could squeeze out even 34, but 33 is already blazingly fast for this early in the war. It's only 1915. This early in the war, I mean, this early in the era, this would be World War I, but uh, this is alternate history, so there's none. Okay, so yeah, let's just save and go ahead and build this. How much are you going to be? Just go ahead and get your Tiger II. 32,000, 30, 10, yeah, this is not bad. And the maintenance cost is 22,000, which is a little bit higher than I would um, expect. Good news is it's only gonna take 11 months to build these. So I will get a whole bunch more. Probably this is as many as I should do. So a whole bunch of new Tiger II classes. Um, I think those will see a lot of success, a lot of action, but I think they'll be very successful uh, with that number of torpedoes and that really good speed. So it's going to get them to the target quickly. They can engage with their two three inch guns. Not going to be super important, but I, I don't. The main advantage torpedo or destroyers have is torpedoes. In this era, um, well, I mean, even the same for World War II. Your destroyer, which is so much cheaper and uh, just so much more expendable, can threaten. A heavy ship like a battleship or a battle cruiser, just by the nature of his torpedoes. So that's, I think, the main advantage with destroyers, and probably the reason why I really do prefer this torpedo-heavy design for them. Not to mention, I mean, on top of that, that we're playing Austria-Hungary, and they're supposed to be a little more torpedo-focused anyway. All right, so let's get down to the war itself now. Going back, shipbuilding is never going to be a problem at this point. Um, we'll let it keep building up, and then hopefully around 1920 we can get an even better Dreadnought. Because uh, we have right now very good battle cruisers um, being constructed. So it will be nice to get some really nice Dreadnoughts. Some top-of-the-line ones with all-or-nothing armor and the works. Let's get the, the absolute best. Okay, this is a new battle cruiser from the Russians. This is a pretty good ship, actually. A nine-sided broadside. They didn't take advantage of superimposed. Um, 26 knots, pretty good speed though. Director fire control, like I think we're on director as well, so. Oh, okay, we made a breakthrough in fire control, but we got better ship design. And, okay, so now our light cruisers, which is not going to be, oh, very nice, better torpedo technology, right on cue. And we have a destroyer raid. Wow, what? What a terrible thing. I'm just going to decline that. I just, I can't be bothered to do a destroyer raid. Even though we, we need to sink as many ships as possible to get the, the blockade diminished. Uh, convoy attack, we will do. Because sometimes, yep, this is the situation here. Sometimes you do get the heavy ships. Okay, so this will be probably the rest of the episode. Maybe even more than we can do in one single episode. A convoy raid. All right, so let's see what we have with us. Vulcan, Navarre, what are the Navarre class, of course. But are you Navarre class? Yes. 
Then we have two destroyers. We're going to put these guys into <laughs> support line ahead mode immediately. Uh, okay, we can't move yet, but I think we will be able to in a moment. It's nice to see our submarines. We could also probably build a few more. Eventually we should get control. Until then, I'm just going to take a sip of water. Hmm. There it is. Okay, um, we can sometimes see our target, which is already here. Doesn't make sense. Let's just increase speed, maybe to 19, because everyone can go 19 comfortably, and see what we find eventually. And now that we have control, I'm going to switch these guys over to be officially line ahead. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Unknown ship sighted just on time and they're to the south, which unfortunately the wind is calm, but not dead calm. So we'll switch everyone into line ahead mode. And we're coming in at the worst angle, but that's okay. Let's see what we have down here. This ship's actually pretty fast. Oh, is it going to be one of those? I forgot to check the time. It's only 5.30, but considering it's October, I guess it's early enough for the sun to be going down. Wow, we have extremely poor visibility. That's really not good. I'm not at all happy about this. It should make convoy raiding technically a little bit easier, but... Oh my gosh, things are about to get even worse. So let's just, I tried to pause first, but now they're gonna go to AI control again. Okay, well, that's fine. And that should be good. You know what? Support, line ahead. I'm okay with this. Let's just keep these guys on AI control. They should be straddling each side of me. And yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> it's funny that I'm actually controlling the destroyers, not the light cruisers, but that's fine. So if we happen to run into them doing this course, then we do, so be it. But if not, you know, it's fine. Let's try going this way. Oh, okay, there they are. So let's go ahead and con uh, encourage torpedo launching. This is a great play great time to be doing that. Get these guys into line of breast, turn together. These guys are gonna step away from the battle a little bit and we're gonna get the Vulcan. Actually, yeah. Let's have you go twenty four or so. Slow down a little bit. Get these guys up to battle speed. Okay, they are launching torpedoes. This is what I want them to do. I, I'm gonna take off gun range. Whoops, sight range, no, I'm gonna take off gun range. There it is. Actually, this is funny. For them, gun range is less than torpedo range. <laughs> but torpedo range is gonna be the closest thing, the most important thing. So I'm, gonna, I'm still gonna take off that just to make things a little easier to read. Okay, we are launching. So let's grab these guys go to almost squad max. Okay, they're launching some more. This actually is a destroyer, or a, a dreadnought. And this is a not a bad dreadnought, a wreck wing class. They have 13 inch guns, so, you know, very comparable to my dreadnought. Mine's slightly lighter than theirs, but they are much more heavily armored. Oh my gosh, the Cobra has just been completely pummeled. So we'll turn away a little bit. The idea here is still to let my um, Dreadnoughts close. Oh, I think one of those will be a hit. Let's turn in hard and see if we can force the Dreadnought back down. Okay, at this point you guys should go almost squad max. I just want them to stay in formation, which is the reason why. Ah, it looks like all our torpedoes missed, sadly. Um, 
Ah, uh, man. I don't think the Cobra is going to make it out of this one. Ah, the Python is actually getting hit now, too. Okay. And she's not launching any more torpedoes. Do you... I mean, you do have two more torpedoes to launch, one per side. Cobra, you're just... <laughs> You have one more starboard, but that's it. I can't even control you. I don't know how you're controllable at this point, but <clears throat> there it is. You're now controllable. Pull the Python back. I mean, they've launched almost all their torpedoes. It doesn't look like anything happened, unfortunately. So we'll get the light cruisers in here. And, uh, okay, we are hitting two near misses, so get the Python out. And we have hit this ship. They are going slow, which should be an advantage for us. Whoa. Ah. Uh, oh, okay. That's just the hash A class. And we're, you know, we're sinking a bunch of other things. That's good. Dangerous, of course, for us to be in here like this. But we should be able to sink a bunch of these things. Yeah, this is perfect. Now we're getting our light cruisers on the destroyer, which is ideal. And uh, we'll be able to finish off any transport ships here. Mainly, I want to make sure... Let me actually detach. So the Cobra, it looks like she'll survive. I, I don't want to detach necessarily. I, I mean, I want these guys to detach on the one hand because I want them to go home. But I don't want them to be in their own stupidity. We've seen... But sometimes detaching them causes them to move at max speed and actually sink themselves because they're stupid. I'd really like to see that patched. Like give maybe give an option for how slow they're going to go or something. I don't know. We've actually somehow worked our way over to the correct side for the wind as well. Not that it matters from this distance. Navarro's launching torpedoes. Unnecessary be launching your torpedoes against those guys. Okay, now here comes the main line. And it's good, actually, that we have our light cruiser shielding. So I want you guys to target this ship. Yes. With torpedoes, that's what I am officially trying to say. Okay, let's turn in and try to give my um, dreadnoughts a chance to pull up. So something like this. Okay, the Budapest was hit by a torpedo. That's my fault, probably, for not changing direction for too long. But we are hitting this battleship, so that's the good news. And we need this guy to come back. We'll pull away a little bit. Oh, it's, a, it's just massive. Everything's... <laughs> We've gotten into the chaos stage of the, the fight, the engagement, where um, a lot of stuff is happening very quickly. We're still launching torpedoes, which is good. That's what I wanted. Um, these guys don't have torpedoes? No. Okay, that explains that. The Budapest is actually being pulled off the line somehow because well, we don't have the reason. I guess it's... It was in the past, the reason why. I mean, the Svent is fine. I was also taking some pretty serious damage here. Jeez. Oh, the Budapest has power disabled. Okay, that explains it. Now, of course, we'll slow way down, because now we have to cover the defense of this, uh, of the Budapest. And we're the ones taking a lot of hits now. We're only dealing out very small damage, but if this is just one Dreadnought, we should... Ooh, that was close. We should be able to come... It should be a victory for us. Hard to imagine why how we would lose to... Oh, man, the Vulcan is sinking. Wow. Oh my gosh, the Navarra is sinking. Wow, that was a very unfortunate turn of events. So now we really have to, we're, we're losing this engagement now in terms of uh, points, blockading points. So I really want to try to catch up to that Dreadnought, because I think we've done a lot of damage. And they've used a lot of their torpedoes already, so... There they are. Okay. Windside. 
I know this is a little bit crazy, but it's true that they will have had used a lot of their torpedoes at this point. I don't know if that's a heavy cruiser. It might actually be... Oh, it is. And we are launching broadsides. I didn't even notice that destroyer. I thought that was my destroyer. <laughs> well, we don't have to worry about torpedoes from that ship. Okay, there they are again. Oh my gosh, we have ships on both sides of us. That's a battleship? Well, it certainly doesn't look like a battleship. Nonetheless, we have hit it with three... Five total 13-inch shells. And this is just an armed cruiser. We're going to turn hard in for that, for this one, this battleship. I don't know what it is, but let's find out and let's, let's sink it. Uh, we sank another destroyer. I don't know what this is, but whatever it is, it looks like it's going down. Yeah. We're putting a lot of fire on it. They're only firing medium guns, which could lead me to believe that they're not actually a battleship, but... It's going to be, whatever it is, it's going to help neutralize the fact that we already lost two light cruisers. And we are just putting down their um, destroyers all over the place. Let's actually turn in, uh, let's just hope that this is sunk. We're still going to hit it a whole bunch. So let's keep pursuing the rest of the convoy. Or really the convoy defense. That's fine. So lot, lots of hits on that. Let's keep going. We know that their last known bearing was this direction. So let's go ahead and continue until we spot them. Ah, I thought that was possibly seeing them. Will they have doubled back though? Will they have doubled back? They could have doubled back. And we know that their armored merchant cruiser was somewhere down here, right? So we can go back for that as well. The Cobras actually decided to reattach to us. <laughs> it's a brave, brave ship. Let's see. I'm going to detach her again. Yes, please go away, Cobra. You ran over your head. Oh, we actually sank that armored merchant cruiser. Let's go back over here. There was, the ship was, the battleship was somewhere over here, I thought. I did not pay attention to where it is exactly. Hmm. I think we sunk it, but. Yeah, it doesn't look like we're gonna have any luck finding it. So let's go down to cruise mode. Let's just cruise around. Okay, fine. So, oh, it was actually a dreadnought. Okay, well then, all is forgiven. Loss of two light cruisers, completely forgiven because we sank a dreadnought and a heavy cruiser. So maybe, actually I'm not really sure how this happened. Can we please see the details? Did I sink that one? Yeah, we did. And that was the only one they had, so it definitely was, nope. Yep, that was the only one they had. So we did sink um, that one dreadnought. Very cool. And we also sunk a, a heavy cruiser. Can we see the details now? Does it reveal the details of... Not really, huh? Okay, can we see this? This should show us where they sunk. <clears throat> that, that, that one sunk over here. Um, so it sank somewhere else, actually. It sank on its own. Okay, I don't understand. Did the Python torpedo or something off? No, I would have gotten a notification. And I wish I knew where their heavy cruiser was sunk. I just wish I knew what had happened exactly. Because we didn't sink it. I think the maybe that battleship we saw was the Dreadnought. Although it might have been the heavy cruiser because it looks like they're... Okay, let's go to big ships. Yeah, it must have been this one then. The battleship that sunk over here. Which means, okay, well if I do this correctly. We 
pursued over here. Yeah, this is where their heavy cruiser sunk. So I did, that was a heavy cruiser. So their battleship wandered off and just took too much damage. Okay, well, very good. Wow, an impressive engagement. I think that's going to be a perfect time to call this episode to a close as well. So we'll just go ahead and name that one. Let's see what happens. Still blockade going on. Let's see how that blockade is figuring out based on our most recent action. It's, yeah, well, we're down to only 29 points. So you look here, I don't know how this works exactly. It was a good question somebody asked is, how are they, like, where does this 165 points that we see from France, where does that even come from? I think that battleships are worth 10 and maybe dreadnoughts and battle cruisers are worth more. I mean, maybe it's like 15, 12, 10. I, I don't know what you could probably do. This is one of those like uh, elementary questions where they ask you how many quarters and dimes and nickels add up to, you know, 160 or whatever. <laughs> what it, What's the way you can get the least number of coins? I don't know. Um, there's there's probably a combination of points for battle cruisers, battle um, dreadnoughts and battleships that you can get to 165 with five heavy cruisers, nine light cruisers, etc. But I don't know that the numbers by myself. We can see that actually the reason why I'm so low on points right now is because every single one of my dreadnoughts is in port. <laughs> we have no heavy ships available. It doesn't bode well for next month. Hopefully, actually next month um, they'll be back out, but they're kind of doing the smart thing. If they know that they can't possibly overwhelm the British fleet, no, they could. It's only 184. Oh, they're 165. And this is, again, what I'm mentioning about the 10% blockade. The difference between points being 10% is probably a little bit too low. I think it should be higher just because, look, at 165, 184, they would, uh, Great Britain, even though the point totals, they're so close. I mean, that's really not a substantial dis um, difference. But that would be enough for Great Britain to blockade France, even if France had all their ships there. No, not if France left the two cruisers and nine light cruisers. Yeah, this is probably gives us a better idea. If light cruisers are worth two points each, this is 18 away, which leaves um, 16. So that means heavy cruisers are worth eight points each. That seems a little bit high. Otherwise, if light cruisers are worth three points though, then this is heavy cruisers are two heavy cruisers are worth seven points, which doesn't make sense at all. So I, I think it, it looks like light cruisers are worth two points and heavy cruisers are worth eight points, which probably does justify battleships being worth 10, battle cruisers worth 10 to 15, and dreadnoughts being worth 10 to 15. So anyway, um, that's enough rambling about points and blockades and all that. Let's just uh, call this video to a close so that the next one can begin sooner which will mean more naval battles, which yeah, I guess that's more interesting than talking about blockade points. So thanks for watching. If you have any comments, go ahead and leave them. If I missed anybody's ship naming in particular, that's what I'm, just go ahead and remind me and I'll get to it next turn. So um, other than that, I'll see you in the next video.